Well, welcome everyone, and thanks so much for tuning in today to our SongTrust webinar covering pay sources. So let's get started. Uh, a quick introduction of your two co-hosts for today. My name is Asia Smulders, and I am the Society Relations and Client Services Lead here at SongTrust. I have been with the company at, at their New York headquarters for just over two years now. So if, you, if you're already a client and have reached out to us for support, there's a good chance that we've already spoken. And uh, my name is Dwayne Ector. I'm the Global Head of Partner Relations at SongTrust. I've been with SongTrust for just over a year now, um, but I have over 14 years experience in the music publishing uh, business. So today, what we're gonna do, uh, just a, a quick run through of the agenda. Um, we're gonna touch on uh, a number of different things. First, we're gonna talk about master recordings and compositions um, and the different types of royalties that you get from those. Then we're gonna move on to the pay sources um, around the world. So the different types of organizations that we as publishers or you as a, a, a songwriter might look to get uh, royalties from. Um, we'll also look at the relationships between the between publishers and the various pay sources, as well as publishers and sub-publishers and what the differences are. Um, and we also give you important information about song registration um, and why all of the metadata that you meant to be giving us is so important. So um, just a quick reminder that for each song you write and record, there are gonna be two separate copyrights that exist within that one song. That will be the composition, which is the underlying melody, lyrics, and music, and then the sound recording, which is also known as the master recording, and that refers to the recorded version of the composition. Each of these copyrights has their own sets of rights, meaning those who own them get to decide who can use them and how. In addition, each half earns different royalties when used and are tracked by different uh, organizations. So on the master side, master royalties are handled by distributors and sound exchange in the US specifically and royalties generated from the composition, also known as publishing royalties, are collected by collection societies, including performing rights organizations, also known as PROs and mechanical agencies. These organizations are often territory specific, so there's a number of them across the world. So when it comes to publishing royalties specifically, there are three main types you should be aware of, and that is performance royalties, mechanical royalties, and microsync royalties. So performance royalties are generated anytime your song is publicly performed. So that includes when your song is played on the radio, in restaurants, bars, nightclubs, as well as when your song is sung or played at a live show. These royalties are collected and paid out by PROs, such as BMI, ASCAP, or CSAC here in the United States. Mechanical royalties are generated whenever a copy of your song is made. So some examples of this are when a label produces a CD, someone digitally purchases your, purchases your song on a store like iTunes, or when your song is streamed. Uh, the mechanical royalty rate for physical and digital sales is set by the local copyright office and is referred to as the statutory mechanical rate. However, streaming rates are not statutory, so each streaming service pays out a bit differently, and each one has their own calculation to determine the rate. Lastly, microsync royalties and licenses are just the synchronization of music with a moving image, like regular sync, but just in smaller bulk uses. So this most commonly occurs on online video sharing sites such as YouTube. These microsync licenses can generate both performance and mechanical royalties for you. So for example, if you monetize the YouTube video, you're gonna be generating both performance and mechanical royalties. If you're looking to get a deeper dive on the two halves of a song plus the royalty types they each generate, make sure to check out our Music Publishing 101 sessions, which you can access through the link in the chat. Uh, but for the purpose of this webinar, we're going to focus on the composition side and more specifically the pay sources that track and collect your music publishing royalties. So Asia's mentioned both the performing uh, rights and the mechanical rights and the, the various royalties that, 
that you um, are due from whenever your song gets performed uh, or broadcast or sold. And these royalties, um, they're the licenses that the uh, that are paid by the the users are usually paid to a pay source. And there's various types of pay sources that collect these different types of royalties on behalf of publishers and songwriters. Um, so as Asia pointed out, stuff that's performed, especially public performance of royalties, uh, stuff that is played live and so on and so forth, um, are usually licensed and paid out by PROs, their performance rights organizations. Um, the likes of ASCAP and BMI for, are really good examples of those. Um, and the reproduction rights that Asia mentioned, those are typically collected and then subsequently paid out by mechanical rights organizations like HFA. Um, in Australia, there's an organization called AMCOS that does it there. Um, and there's another type of organization that typically does both. Um, you find those organizations in various other countries in the world, like in France, there's SASEM. So they collect both the performance and the mechanical rights and pay it out to their members and publishers. And GEMA in Germany also does the same. Now, you can also collect um, mechanical and sometimes performance rights from organizations that are not classed as PROs, MROs, or CMOs. Um, and a really good example of that is MRI here in, uh, in the US. And MRI does a whole bunch of different things. And one of the things that they do is license and also pay out on mechanical royalties. And Organizations like MRI, we like to term those as rights administrator entities. Um, also, publishers could sometimes get like get royalties directly from DSPs, and I think we all already know what DSPs are. Um, and there's some some of us some of us publishers we have direct deals with the DSPs so that the royalties don't get paid to a PRO or an MRO and then get passed on to us. But instead, what the DSP does is to pay us directly, basically. So moving on, I uh, want to talk about publishing company relationships. So there's typically two types of relationships that publishing companies have with uh, either pay sources or other pu publishers around the world in order to get you the royalties that you that are due to you. So first is the direct relationship. Um, and it kind of does what it says on the tin. With direct relationships, a publisher would have a direct relationship with a pay source and the pay source would pay the publisher directly. Um, and that is in contrast to if a publisher has a sub-publisher in another territory um, that would collect on our behalf. So what happens there is a publisher can go into, can have an agreement with another publisher in another territory so that the publisher in the other territory, excuse me if this sounds a little bit confusing, um, will actually have relationships with those pay sources in that territory and collect on behalf of publisher one. Um, <clears throat> and so publisher, let's call it the publisher in the second territory, publisher two would collect directly from the pay source on behalf of publisher one, and then pay the royalties on to publisher one. Um, the reason why, uh, there are many reasons why a publisher might want or need a sub publisher. Um, and it's typically because the, Publisher one may not have the resources to have a direct relationship with pay sources in a specific territory. So what they would do is then contract with a publisher in another territory or publisher two to help manage those relationships um, and collect the royalties on their behalf. So 
before we go on, uh, Dwayne and I just want to remind everyone that all creators should be affiliated with their home collection society and actively registering your songs at that society. Properly registering your songs with your home collection society is one of the most important steps you can take in order to make sure you can receive your royalties. And while this won't ensure you're totally covered for Global to Royalty Collection, registering your compositions with your local PRO is going to be your initial bare minimum foray into covering your music publishing basics, so make sure not to overlook this step. The top things to include when you are registering your song is going to be your ISRC, which will be assigned to your sound recording by your distributor. The ISRC is essentially a digital fingerprint for the sound recording. So this represents a unique identification and helps separate your sound recording from the hundreds and thousands of other sound recordings worldwide. Um, in order to properly register, map, and collect royalties generated off your sound recording, it's really important that your PRO and publisher have your ISRC. The next thing is going to be your IPI number, which stands for Interested Parties Information. And IPI is an identification number assigned to songwriters and publishers to uniquely identify them as rights holders. And your PRO is going to be responsible for assigning this to you after you've affiliated with them. Uh, this number is vital in identifying you as the owner of a song, regardless of where in the world your music is played. So if you don't provide your IPI or if you provide an incorrect one, collection societies are going to have a hard time identifying you as the copyright owner, which means that you might not get paid your royalties. Uh, lastly is going to be song splits. So this specifically relates to if you're working with more than one person to write a song. Uh, the first thing you should do once you finish co-writing a song is to agree on ownership shares for each writer. Get it in writing and make sure that the shares always add up to 100% exactly. One of the best ways and easiest ways you can track this is to have everyone complete what is known as a split sheet. So that way, when it comes time to register your song, you know exactly who to include on the registration as well as what shares to allocate to them. And to help you keep track of all of this, we've created a songwriter's checklist for you, which you can download now through the chat and will also be included in the email after. So now we want to just have a quick conversation about why affiliating with a society isn't enough. But I've I've seen I'm seeing that a there are a couple questions that are are touching on this already. So if you affiliate with a society, um, there's a good chance that they will be doing a pretty good job of collecting royalties in your own home territory. So for instance, if you are an ASCAP member, um, there's a fantastic chance that ASCAP is gonna do a great job at ensuring that all of the uses of your songs in the US and its territories are, are licensed and you will get paid for it. Um, however, what, what they don't do very well is uh, societies are not obligated to register your songs at other societies. Um, if, other, if your songs are being used in other territories, um, there is a good chance that that society in the other territory will try their best to find out um, who, who the copyright owners of the song your song is and try to send it to your home society um, but they're gonna have to dig through a lot of information um, a lot of different databases and there's a chance that um, it could go unreported and unpaid or rather it could go unidentified in that other territory at that society and unpaid because ASCAP, it's, they're not necessarily obliged to send your registrations to that foreign society. However, if you do have a publisher like SongTrust, we will do our best through our currently 50 plus uh, society or uh, affiliations around the world to make sure that whenever your song gets used in a, in a foreign territory, that your uh, works are going to be registered with the PRO or the CMO or the, uh, the MRO um, in that territory um, so that you will, you will be paid for those uses. Yeah, 
And so another reason why just affiliating with one society isn't going to really cover you globally is that, especially in the United States, um, most societies focus on collecting one specific type of royal royalty. And so in order to make sure you're collecting all the different types of royalties your publishing, your music publishing generates, you would have to be affiliated with each entity. So for example, in the US, if you're affiliated with ASCAP, they're going to help you collect your performance royalties, but they aren't the designated mechanical agency. So you won't be able to get your mechanical royalties through ASCAP. Um, and also going off of what Dwayne said earlier, if you're only with one society, there is a good chance you're going to be missing out on your royalties overseas because your society's main focus is going to be to make sure that you're covered in the territory that they're located in. So they're not going to be actively monitoring and registering your songs outside of this territory, which means it's going to be harder for you to locate that money and then also get paid that money. So where does SongTrust fit into this puzzle? Well, SongTrust is a global publishing administration service built to serve independent and unpublished songwriters. Through our professional direct global administration network, we help independent writers collect their worldwide publishing royalties without having to give up copyright ownership. So we are a flexible DIY solution to making sure you're not leaving any money on the table no matter where in the world your royalties are generated. Some of the key highlights about SongTrust is that we work on a song by song basis. So you can decide what songs you want us to administer for you and you're not required to bring over your entire catalog. In addition, we are very transparent and speedy. So we've created a comprehensive royalty reporting dashboard that allows you to easily follow the royalties you're collecting and even help predict what you might be earning in the upcoming quarter. We also pay out four times a year where most societies actually only pay out twice. So this means that four times a year, you'll receive a royalty report from us and either a direct deposit or a check with your earnings. And lastly, we are one, a one-time flat fee. So there's going to be a one-time sign-up cost to get onto this platform. And then after, you'll have your account for life. After that initial fee, you aren't, you aren't going to be subject to any other costs. And instead, we'll just take a 15% commission off of the royalties we help you collect each quarter. So whether you are just starting out or you've been in the business for a while, SongTrust is the ideal option for creators in any stage of their careers. We are here to help support you and give you the tools you need to successfully manage your copyrights and collect your royalties globally. Okay, so that concludes our webinar, but we're, Dwayne and I are gonna hang around a bit to answer all of your questions. Um, and we're gonna do this kind of round robin. So we'll each take one and go back and forth. And I'll start off with, uh, with the first one. So. One of the um, earlier questions, or probably the first question that we received, it says, um, should we need to sign with all of the organizations or SongTrust works on behalf of the artists slash labels they contact and we need to just connect with SongTrust? So the answer to that one is, um, as a songwriter, you typically, only really need to sign up with one PRO that if you're in the US, that would be ASCAP or BMI or CZAC. Um, however, as we said before, for um, there are a lot of a lot of different uses that the PRO themselves um, do not cover. Um, or for instance, the as we mentioned before, there's a lot of uh, international royalties that might be stuck at societies because they're unidentified um, because the uh, your local PRO don't or won't push your song registrations to these foreign societies or there might be mechanical um, monies kicking about um, for, for various reasons that you might not even be aware of and that is where song trust comes in um, as Asia said before and I said as well um, song trust will make sure that wherever your song gets used around the world, that we would try to make sure, do our best to ensure that uh, those monies are paid, um, paid on time and at the correct, correct amount. Um, as well as the mechanicals as well, we are really very well connected, particularly in the US, 
for picking up uh, mechanical royalties. So in, in short, um, you can, it, it is advisable definitely to sign up with a PRO like ASCAP or BMI in the US. Um, however, having a publisher or an administrator like SongTrust is definitely worth having as well to help ensure that you're getting every last penny that you're owed. So this is a great uh, segue into the next question, which is when I register my songs with a PRO, what part does SongTrust play? And do I register and list SongTrust as the publisher? So one of the great things about SongTrust is that we're gonna take all the tedious registration issues that you have to deal with um, at the societies uh, away from you. So we're gonna essentially handle that for you. The way it works is once you sign up with SongTrust, you'll be given an account with us and you will go in and add yourself as a writer and that's where you're gonna need your IPI number. And if you're not affiliated with a PRO, we can actually help affiliate you with uh, four different PROs we work with. And then once you're set up in our system, you then go to add the songs you want us to administer directly in your SongTrust account. After that, that's it. You don't have to do anything else. We will then register that song with your local PRO as well as all the other pay sources and agencies we work with around the world. And when we do that, we'll make sure that your information is correctly listed on the song as well as song trust will be listed as uh, your publisher as well. So you won't have to worry about registering songs with your PRO anymore after you sign with song trust because we're gonna do that for you. And that also segues uh, into another question that, that we received does it matter which CMO I am affiliated with? The very short answer is no, it really does not. Um, we definitely always advise that you uh, are affiliated or become a member of a CMO or a PRO. Um, as a matter of fact, I do not believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Asia, but you, you will not even be able to sign up fully with SongTrust unless you are affiliated uh, or a member of a PRO um, and we can actually assist with that process. Uh, we can, if you are not as yet a member of a PRO, uh, you can still um, begin the, the process of become, becoming a SongTrust client and we have the option to direct, to sign you up with an American PRO or uh, SOCAN in Canada. Um, or if you're not in Canada or the US, you can, you do have the option of signing up to IMRU all directly via our website. Um, and we will assist you with the process of becoming affiliated with a PRO. Uh, but again, to answer that question, does it matter which CMO that you're affiliated with? Um, the answer is no. Uh, as long as you're affiliated with at least a PRO, then you should be fine um, however, it needs to be augmented, uh, or we would strongly advise that it is also uh, augmented with um, a publishing relationship like SongTrust. So another question we got um, is regarding the metadata we spoke about. So where can you find your IPI number? So your IPI number is gonna be assigned to you by the PRO that you decide to affiliate with. Um, and they'll assign it to you after you've affiliated with them. So if you don't know your IPI number, but you are already with a PRO, then you should check with them directly. Um, they'll definitely be able to let you know what it is. Oftentimes when you log into your portal, the IPI will be somewhere on that page. And as well as if they're, your PRO offers like a public database. So for example, BMI and ASCAP both have public song data databases. You can find your IPI by searching yourself in that database as well. So another question that we have is, what if the original publisher is not a member of a society, but sub-publishers are? Um, that's actually fine. If you already have a publisher that has sub-publishing deals in place that covers the world pretty much, then that's, that's absolutely fine. And I know that in the US especially, um, you, you, we do find that a lot of writers and composers have to, or in a lot of cases are encouraged to set up what is called a DBA, um, 
as a publishing entity. And that publishing entity may not necessarily be affiliated with a PRO, but that publishing entity might then sub-publish to other publishers. Um, but once those sub-publishing deals are in place and those deals are comprehensive, then that should be fine. Um, and again, to answer the original question, or to answer the question in short, the original publisher does not necessarily need to be a member of a society. However, um, if they're, they have sub-publishing deals in place where the those sub-publishers do have direct um, relationships with pay sources, then that should be fine. Okay, so another question we got is does the split sheet only cover ownership of the composition publishing side of the equation and how do you document splits for the master recording side so this is a great question um split sheets can be used for either or they're just essentially um, a basic template that you list your name your ipi and then what share of the songs you own and then everybody has to sign it so song trust we offer uh, a lot of different kinds of split sheets you can download for free, including such as like lyric sheets, composition split sheets, and then you can essentially use the same one for a master spreadsheet. Just make sure that if you're doing two different split sheets, so one for the composition and one also for the master, that is very clearly labeled on those split sheets, which one is referring to which, because it's not uncommon that you can own a specific share of the composition, but the percentage you own of the master, for example, is not going to be the same as the publishing side. So you want to just make sure it's very clear um, to everyone involved who owns what of each uh, of the copyrights involved. Great. So um, another question that was asked is, I'm a Song Trust member and ASCAP member. Will Song Trust take care of ASCAP registration or should I do that. Um, the answer is once you in once you inform Song Trust via our portal of your work registrations, we will take care of that for you. Um, you do not then need to register your works with ASCAP. Um, as a matter of fact, I think if you do register your works with ASCAP and then register it with Song Trust it might cause a small conflict, not one that we can't handle, we can sort it out, um, but it, it, might cause, it might cause some small issues, but there's no need for you to register your songs with ASCAP if you are already registering it with SongTrust. We will take care of doing that registration on your behalf at ASCAP as well as um, any other pay source around the world where we know that your songs are being used or played. Okay, so uh, the next question we have is, what's the difference between the Harry Fox Agency or HFA and Music Reports? Do they collect the same royalties or do I need to be signed up with both agencies? Um, and I'm gonna try to knock out two here, which is also if you're affiliated, if you're a member of Harry Fox or MRI, does this conflict with being a song trust client? So. For the first part of the question, uh, the Harry Fox Agency and Music Reports are both uh, agencies based in the United States and they handle mechanical royalties on the publishing side. So they do handle the same type of royalty. The main difference is they each uh, issue licenses to different services. So for example, if you have music on Spotify, the Harry Fox Agency is gonna be the company that is gonna issue licenses to Spotify to use that music, as well as collect publishing royalties uh, generated from streams on Spotify. Music Reports, for example, handles different services. So they'll handle, I think, titles through Music Reports, uh, Pandora, SoundCloud, for example. So if you, that's, this is like a clear example of how complicated music publishing can get, because even though those two sites, societies collect the same type of royalties, they don't work with the same parties. So if you're in the US and you wanna make sure that you're covered for all the different streaming services, then yes, you should be registering directly with the Harry Fox Agency and Music Reports. Um, but next question is, if you register with two societies, it comes with your song trust affiliation. 
The answer is no. So Song Trust works directly already with the Harry Fox Agency and Music Reports. So if you're already a member of these two uh, agencies and then you sign up with us, we'll essentially step in and let them know that we're now going to be handling your publishing for you. So we'll work with them on your behalf and, and there's going to be no conflict with you uh, using both services at once. The only difference is similar to what Dwayne said, you're not going to have to worry about registering your songs directly with the Harry Fox Agency or Music Reports anymore uh, because we'll do that for you as we would do with your PRO. Great. So we have a, a very interesting uh, question um, that, that wasn't exactly covered by um, any of the things that we spoke about during the presentation, but I'll answer it anyway. Uh, so the question reads, how far back do you think unclaimed international royalties can be claimed? So what I do know is that the vast majority of uh, PROs and MROs and CMOs around the world, they hold on to royalties on average for three years um, before before they put it back into their royalty pools to be redistributed to other writers. So what tends to happen is if a song goes unclaimed or, or unidentified at a pay source, um, they, would, they would put that on what is called an unidentified list or um, an unclaimed list, different pay sources uh, or different so um, societies have different different words for, for what they call their various lists. Um, and it's up to the likes of publishers um, or, uh, or songwriters or societies to go through those lists, obtain those lists from the pay sources and then go through them and um, identify the songs that they know are theirs and claim them so that those royalties can be released. Um, but as I said originally, usually international pay sources hold on to those royalties for three years before they're reabsorbed back into um, into their various royalty pools. Okay, so another question we have is, I have a publishing company uh, set up with BMI. Do I still need SongTrust? And the short answer is yes. And that's partly because, similar to what we talked about before, BMI is only going to cover you for performance royalties, and their main focus is going to be covering you for performance royalties generated within the United States. So if you have a publishing company um, and you're only with BMI, you're still not going to be covered for mechanical royalties generated both in the U.S. and abroad, as well as you're still risking missing out on performance royalties outside of the U.S. because BMI's sole focus, well, main focus is going to be making sure you're covered in the U.S. and figuring out whether or not you have royalties overseas and how to get that money back to you is kind of a second, a back end focus for them. So if you have a publishing company and you are interested in signing up with SongTrust, you can definitely still work with us. Uh, the difference is we'll be managing your songs on behalf of your entity versus on behalf of yourself as a writer. Uh, when you sign up with SongTrust and you add your writer information, there'll be a box asking if you have your a publishing entity set up. And this is where you can add the information of your entity you've set up with your PRO. So that way, when we register your songs, we'll make sure to include that entity on all the song registrations as well. Fantastic. Uh, so another question that we have, a uh, very interesting one, is being from France, can I register with IMRU in Ireland? So IMRU is the Irish Music Rights Organization. Uh, they are the PRO in Ireland. Um, SongTrust does have uh, a partnership with IMRU um, where via our website, we are able to uh, sign up songwriters and um, composers who are not yet affiliated with any PRO in the world. Um, on our website, if you are looking to become a SongTrust client, um, you do have the option of signing up to become an IMRO member, and we can facilitate you with that. And 
um, IMRU actually accepts uh, songwriters from of any nationality and who lives in any part of the world. Um, so it's it makes it easy for um, non-US or non-Canadian uh, songwriters to sign up, not only to Song Trust, but at the same time, if you chose to do so, to uh, become a um, a member of of IMRU. So the answer is yes. If you're French, you can register with IMRU. If you're from any nationality, you can register with IMRU. Uh, one of the good things about registering with IMRU is that they also have the ability to um, wire money directly into uh, non-Irish bank accounts because IMRU is based in Ireland um, and they have no issues at all um, taking on non-Irish nationalities as members and also paying into non-Irish bank accounts. So just piggybacking off what Dwayne said for another question we had about if my client is from South Korea, is he still eligible to sign up for Song Trust? So the answer is yes. Just as Dwayne said, we can help you affiliate with IMRO if you're not from the US or Canada, and you'll be able to affiliate with IMRO no matter where in the world you're from. In addition, Song Trust is a global company. So we represent songwriters from all over the world, um, and we work with societies from all over the world as well. So no matter where you're based or where your home territory is from, uh, where your home territory is, you can still use Song Trust and utilize all the uh, features and services that we offer to everyone. So another question that we have is, if we have songs registered before signing up with Song Trust, should we register them with Song Trust? The answer is, if you, if those songs are currently unpublished, and you, um, if it, if those songs are currently unpublished, then the answer is yes. You you do have the ability to sign up uh, or register them with Song Trust. Um, we do not only take brand new songs. If if it is an existing song without any uh, publishing at the moment, then it is absolutely not a problem for you to register it with us. And we will, as I said before, ensure that um, it it's registered not only in your home territory, but everywhere else in the world where we can identify that there is usage against that song and ensure that any monies that are being held up or that are due is released. So uh, two other questions we got, which are kind of kind of relate to each other are, is it a, is the one year lock in period with Song Trust applied by song by song? And how long does it take for you to pay out clients after they signed up? So like I said earlier, Song Trust has a one year administration period. And the reason that we ask we want you to keep stay with us for at least one year once you added your songs is that unlike the distribution side, music publishing works very, very slowly. Um, so it can take anywhere from six to nine months in order for any publishing company to register your songs globally. And within that six, and that's because once we send them off to the, to the society, they then have to process the song into their database and then locate the royalties, especially if you, if they had collected royalties before the song was registered and then released them to us, which we then will pay out to you. So it is a slow going process and the initial songs we register for you are definitely gonna take the longest. So it can sometimes take after you've signed up with us around six, nine months to a year before you'll get your first royalty payment from us. And then after that, you'll start getting paid out four times a year. So that's the main reason why we have the one year period. It's because we're not going to be able to offer you the full benefit of our service if you only are with us for a few months. And that, again, is just because the publishing industry is very slow going and this stuff just takes time to do. And once it's rolling, then you'll start seeing your money come in much more consistently and a lot quicker as well. So another question that we had earlier on is, um, under the definitions that I listed on of uh, the various pay sources, is Spotify and Apple Music, are they DSPs also? And the answer is yes. So um, 
Song Trust has a um, we receive money or royalties for our clients from Spotify and Apple Music. Um, we receive those, but we receive them via MRI, which is uh, what we call a rights administrator entity. Um, however, I think a, a good example of a DSP that we receive royalties directly from is YouTube. So we have a direct license with YouTube and we um, make claims directly to YouTube um, and they pay us directly as well. So that's a really good example of uh, a DSP that we have licensed directly um, and that we receive royalties directly from. So another question we got, um, which actually is quite a common question in music publishing is, do I need to register my songs do I need to register a copyright for every song we want to publish? So uh, I understand this as, do you need to register your songs with the copyright office? And the answer is no. So in the United States and most of the world, your song is automatically protected under copyright law the second it's put into a fixed tangible form. So that means the second that you've recorded it, maybe you've created sheet music for it, um, the second it's in a fixed form, you're automatically protected under copyright law. So you aren't required to register it with your local copyright office in order to uh, be able to collect your publishing royalties and be protected under copyright law. So another question we had is, how does Song Trust compare or contrast with CD Baby publishing deal? Well, as it goes, actually, um, Song Trust administers or is the back office for the CD Baby um, uh, publishing uh, deal. So when you, if you are a CD Baby client and you sign up to their uh, to their publishing deal, basically, um, it's it's Song Trust who who does all the back end on behalf of CD Baby. Uh, so. Essentially, we are, another way to think about it is that we are CD Baby's sub-publisher for the world, essentially. So we have time for one more question. Um, and the question is going to be, can I register as a publisher representing multiple writers with Song Trust? And the answer is yes. So Song Trust is not only available for just independent songwriters, but we work with lawyers, managers, as well as independent publishers. And you all, and we, it's all done within the same account. So once you sign up with us, if you want to use us to help manage your publishing company and the writers your publishing company represent, once you create an account with us, you would then go and add each writer that you represent in that one account, register all the songs under those writers in that one account, and then we'll be able to manage all of those writers for you through that one song trust account. So you can definitely use us if you're interested in managing multiple people, or if you've started your own independent publishing label and are just looking for more help being able to collect your royalties outside of your local territory. Fantastic. So um, this is now the end of, of uh, this webinar session. And uh, this is my first one. So thank you very much for uh, tuning in and, uh, and bearing with me. Um, and until the next time, uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.